someone put that onto a CT scan, and everyone knows that. <laughs> and here's the instrument. You see the ivory one, and uh, here's the plotting I made from from it, and from. Uh, And uh, you and you can see like if we try to analyze it with like different method, like for example, we can try that with uh, concentric circles to and uh, spread them like equally. It is actually very close to what he aim for, and we can do a small adjustment to make the space a little bit more comfortable for the reads, and that's the uh, results here. As well as we can. Try different method of like arranging the balls. Like concentric one is the well, I was like was the like the most common one. But like if we do just the linear one, we can find that it can be a much smaller diameter of, uh, of the bundle if we do that way. So and uh, before we get into like one example, a few things I want to talk about are like. The designs and improvements, or like small detail change, we can do with the instrument. One is we can do all the finger holes, the undercuts, exactly the same, which will be very hard thing for a non uh, non conical one. Like you can just do a reaming from there. If you do like a a design shape, I would say, and then it will be a very hard thing to do, as well as a universal tenon. Here's an example. Although it looks like a full set of Nosemian pipe, but like actually these drones come from three sets, and I bring them together because I bring three different chanters with the one set, so I can put all the different drones come for the set together in here, and it also can bring like a different combination. We can try out a um, different combination, different. Profile, different designer, different and time period, as well as like and the bottom right is the the chamber of the, or we call the drone stock or common stock or the main stock, whatever you want to call, and you can see that screw, so we can adjust the volume to get a resonating、um, chamber as the perfect size. We can guess, we can get rid, get out, get out of some. An、uh, unwanted、uh, resonating, or we want to emphasize that if we want. And the final one is the offset block there, and、uh, it is for like bigger hands or smaller hands, cause the music notes doesn't fit your hands very well sometimes. So if we offset the key block, we can get our hands around to get more space, or we can just play more, more much comfortable. And the final topic here is the extension. So with the technology, we can、uh, bring in a lot of things people plan to do, but very hard to achieve at and at our time. Like for example, we can do a folded ball, almost identical to the external size, about like two millimeter, just for the wall thickness to bring them together. So it it can be a very hard thing to do in the past, or with just with legs even today. But it it will be a reasonable, easy thing to do with a three D printing. So, for example, we can build in up a chanter from scratch. Here's an example of the Lindsay system, and the next slide we'll talk about more. So Lindsay system here is a open source project. I work with a maker who. And currently in、uh, Ascension Island, in yeah,、uh, basically out of nowhere here he, he is now, and、uh, we bring that into an op open source project here. And if you if you're interested, you can just scan the QR code, and uh, uh, you can just download the file and the print and play it, and that's a、uh, like di like. Yeah, I would say like that's the like、um, a special design for three D printing at home, cause um we I modify the ball into a square, so there's less shrinkage than like a, a regular round ball as like we do on the on the regular instrument, and as long as like we bring the files on onto the cloud, we also print and、um, get that into magazine. Piping today it was three years ago, 
we bring the plans for everyone who interested, and we can bring them out. The chanter has like a much bigger range than uh, the the traditional nine note. We can reach like more than two octave with the chanter, but we can still keep the same fingering for the regular um, reg register. And that's my presentation. Thanks very much. And I will play you something at the end. Yeah. So this is my Northumberland-ish pipe, and the chanter is a um, copy from Robert Reed, roughly 1830, and the drone are uh, like combination of like three different sets as I mentioned. Yeah. Szechuan. Uh, we welcome uh, questions from the audience here and at home uh, via Zoom. Our colleague Krishna uh, is moderating the Zoom and might have uh, calls already. Uh, well, not calls, questions uh, via, via chat. Is there a question in the auditorium first? Shall, shall I start maybe with a tangential, with, in a tangent? So, um, one thing we discussed, and I would like to hear you talk about, is that uh, this makes the instrument also much more affordable. Uh, on the other hand, where does that leave the traditional makers uh, that might, in the folk world, might not be already asking the, uh, the right amount of money for their work, since it's not a classical instrument, it's uh, sometimes not valued the work is not valued as much, and the price is already very low. What do you think will happen in the future? Uh, my approach here, or like, or, or I say like, uh, what the price I set for my instrument is the same as the traditional makers with lace. And uh, one thing is, it's not much less work to do. Although like turning, like physical work is less, but like at the same time, it's a good thing to push the price up, as like our good plastic instrument has has been this price, and all your traditional instrument maker should push your price up, and to get get the price match the value of what what you do. That's uh, that's what I'm thinking about really, and uh, this technology is, I would say, can bring the price down, but at the same time, like. I would say it's better to appreciate like the traditional maker with like totally training skill with like thousand hours spent with a uh, fast spending lace with all the like risk they face too. So I would say yeah, that's the my answer really. Thank it, you. Any other question? Uh, we also will have a brief discussion at the end of the four presentations in the morning. So oh, Christina, please. <laughs> yeah, very inter interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, I was uh, I was curious that uh, um, are you going to be 
an instrument maker yourself and start a business from this? Or what is, what is your intention? So, um, I would say currently and like in the foreseeable future, it is kind of like my hobby and the like side thing to do. It's, I don't think it will be my main thing. One reason is, the first reason is really, is the like the market it isn't that big and uh, uh, there are on, on some many needs for affordable, like very minority bike pipes in, in, in the big market. It's not like a Highland pipe, you can afford so many big factory manufacturing ma uh, company to do those. It's, it's like very niche things. And so I will keep like instrument like as individual as possible. And uh, this is one of the things uh, I keep that as a hobby. I make them like as an amateur maker, I would say, or like a part time maker. That's my approach. And uh, I'm more interested in like what this can bring in academic world, what can do with like open source, with uh, like hobbyist, with like 3D printing, with like, uh, or, or just music in general, basically. That's my approach, really. Thank you. Thank you, Sichuan. Um, we might move on yeah, to the next presenter good. because we will be speaking again yeah. in the round table and we have time at the end of the morning uh, after the four uh, um, guests speak. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh,